Hi, I'm uh, Michael. I'm a software engineer on PyTorch Compiler, and I'm here to talk about our journey enabling PyTorch Eager for production audiences uh, and large-scale production users. So I'm going to cover three uh, major topics in this talk. The first is why Eager? Why are we building uh, an Eager mode integration for our production audiences? The second is, what are some of the key technical challenges that we faced when um, trying to bring Eager to production audiences and what we built to help solve or resolve some of those technical challenges? And the third is bringing back compilers and optimization into an Eager-first world. So why Eager? Um, the chief goal that we wanted to accomplish was to bring the full flexibility of PyTorch to production audiences without any compromise. So people love using PyTorch because it has a very Pythonic uh, look and feel, and they feel they have the flexibility to do anything necessary to experiment with their ideas. And we wanted to bring that experience to a full production stack. And so we wanted to make it so that any wild thing that you can do while developing a PyTorch model, you should be able to bring directly to your users without uh, too much additional work. Um, so today, the most common path for production users is to write their model in TorchScript and deploy it using our TorchScript runtime and, and JIT compiler uh, to you know, a large scale C++ inference service. And, in the name of being a really solid and portable and uh, robust production framework, uh, TorchScript makes some, some pretty clear design choices, right? The, the TorchScript language subset is a statically typed subset of Python. Uh, it's focused on providing sort of high performance representation uh, at the expense of some of the dynamism and flexibility that we know about from uh, PyTorch. And, and this works. TorchScript itself is, is now widely used across the industry, both at Facebook and other places, um, in large-scale inference services, on mobile phones, in autonomous vehicles, you know, and all sorts of places. But as we progressed further into our uh, pr research to production journey, we found ourselves talking with a number of production users that were struggling to fit some of their more dynamic or more flexible models uh, into sort of the TorchScript static regime. And um, here's an example of, of one of them. So uh, we spoke to a group that's trying to deploy uh, a library called Captum to production. So, Captum is a library that provides model interpretability algorithms for uh, PyTorch models. So it, it basically explains um, why a certain classification was achieved. In this case, you can see in this picture that uh, it's like an image classification algorithm, and it's explaining, oh, why did I think something uh, in this image was a monitor? Or why did I think this is, was an image of bottles? And they wanted to be able to show their users you know, why some of their images were classified in a certain way. So far, so good. But the issue is that Captum itself makes extensive use of this full range of PyTorch features available. You know, there's a lot of dynamism. For example, they call backwards and they add you know, a backward hook. Uh, dynamically in order to observe gradients as the backward is executing. And this is something that TorchScript simply can't uh, represent. They, they need the full flexibility of PyTorch Eager uh, in Python in order to, to actually bring this model to production users. But at the same time, this group was operating at scale. They uh, ran a large C++ inference service that looked like the usual inference setup, right? It's C++, high-performance RPC server, shared memory multi-threading. And they uh, couldn't deploy Python directly uh, to that service because uh, you can't achieve parallelism with multiple Python interpreters um, within the same process. And so, TorchScript was solving a very valuable problem for them. It let them embed the model inside their inference service in a parallelism-friendly way. But they were struggling with the fact that TorchScript, you know, the representation or the packaging format, couldn't fully capture the model that they had. So that brings us to what we built you know, in an attempt to address some of these, these issues. So talking to production users like uh, the Captum folks, we realized that there are three distinct requirements for a production system uh, or a research to production workflow. Um, the first is packaging. We need a way to bundle up and distribute PyTorch models in a hermetic and, and reproducible way. 
The second is deployment. We want to be able to integrate any runtime that we have for running these models into an existing production setup. And we want it to be compatible with a wide range of production setups. You know, everything from uh, you know, a Flask-based Python web server to a high-performance C++ uh, RPC stack, right? And, and the third is optimization. You know, once we have these models and we're running them, how do we make them as fast, as resource efficient as possible so that we can scale up uh, this model for production use cases? So with TorchScript, it was sort of a, an all-in-one solution, right? You, you saved your model with TorchDit save, which would save it to the TorchScript serialization format, and you ran it in the TorchScript runtime, and while you were running it in that runtime, we had a TorchScript JIT compiler that would go in and optimize your code. And, and this works really well, as we've seen, but uh, for some users like Captum, they were struggling with the fact that for packaging and deployment, they needed to export to the TorchScript uh, language subset, which you know impose a set of constraints like static typing and no dynamic behavior on everyone, regardless of whether they were performance sensitive or not. As a result, we decided to unbundle these components into a modular toolkit for research to production. So for packaging, we have a Torch Package, which is a sort of Python native packaging format that allows you to take arbitrary Python data and code and put it in a hermetic and reproducible container. We have Torch Deploy, which lets you run an eager process from a variety of production contexts. And for optimization, you know, TorchScript isn't going anywhere. We, you can still use TorchScript to optimize the parts of your model that you need to. So let's start with Torch Package. This is a library that allows you to bundle model weights and code together in a pure Python way. So uh, as you can see, you can um, export your model by saving it in a pickle-based format. Uh, you can save arbitrary code, and then you can load it back up. And a key difference between Torch Package and uh, already existing ways of saving models is that, for example, when you pickle a model today, you mostly are saving the state dict, the parameters and buffers, and not the actual code that the model depends on. This means that depending on which environment you load it from, the model behavior could be different. So the way that Torch Package works is that it actually detects the dependencies of your data and packages all the code necessary to reproduce the model and load it from any environment, uh, regardless of what version of the code you have in that environment. And Torch Package is, uh, is available as a beta in the latest release of PyTorch. So if you have a package model, you know, how do we actually run it in a C++ or a large-scale inference service uh, uh, with Python? So that's where Torch Deploy comes in. So uh, for that, we have Torch Deploy, a library that allows you to run multiple embedded Python interpreters within a single process. Um, and you know, here's a code sample. As you can see, calling the model is like calling into any C++ library. There's no special setup. And most importantly, there's no weird interaction between the embedded Python interpreter and any global state that may inhibit parallelism. So uh, we're really excited about this technology because Python's uh, so-called global interpreter lock, which prevents a concurrent execution of Python bytecode, has been one of the key technical challenges to deploying Python for machine learning at scale in, in some of these production contexts. And we think that this technology helps uh, address this challenge and, and unlocks a lot of potential for you know, running pure Python uh, for research production use cases. And Torch Deploy is experimental in the current version of PyTorch. Now, that doesn't mean that it's unstable. It just means that the APIs are subject to change as we, as we refine them. And of course, TorchScript is still in the mix, right? It, for users who uh, benefit from Torch, TorchScript's all-in-one approach to packaging, where you package the model and it's in a very portable embedded format that runs on a specialized interpreter, uh, you know, examples might be PyTorch Mobile or running PyTorch in embedded environments or on a car. Uh, they can continue to use PyTorch just as it is today. But for server use cases that want to push boundaries on, in terms of what kinds of models that we're running and, and the flexibility and dynamism of those models, we expect TorchScript to be more used like a, a paintbrush than a, and, than a paint bucket, right? You, you're going to optimize the specific parts of your program that you think can be accelerated or benefit from optimization, but more tricky or complex or dynamic code can just be run uh, in Python. 
So we hope by doing this, we can provide a really seamless end-to-end -end research production workflow. You can start by directly exporting your Python code to run in a high-performance, parallelizable setup while optimizing it as needed with TorchScript. Lastly, I wanted to zoom in on optimization and performance as it applies to Eager in production. So in the August 1983 edition of Byte magazine, Stephen Johnson and Brian Kernighan were making the case uh, to a skeptical audience for writing programs in their new high-level expressive programming language. They, they argued that iteration speed and flexibility trumped raw performance uh, not because performance wasn't important, but because you could always go back later you know, and add performance. That's the idea behind make it work, then make it right, then finally make it fast. I mean, the irony of this case is that this high-level expressive programming language they were talking about was C, but I think it applies just as much to machine learning today. They apply well to our current context, and the reason we want to enable Eager in production is so that folks can make cutting-edge research and cutting-edge models available to people as quickly as possible, and then go in and incrementally optimize for efficiency and capacity purposes. So a really important part of basing our research-to-production workflow on Python is that Python is the lingua franca of numerical and scientific computing. So like every optimization or compiler project under the sun has bindings to Python and you can use them from within our system. Uh, so we really want to emphasize people using the right tool for the job. And, and the, the projects listed here are just examples, right? There are many, many uh, other things that we, we didn't put here, but if you need to use TensorRT because it's the best uh, fit for your workflow, you can because we sort of have this l common deployment platform that's based on Python and everything has bindings to Python. So looking forward, we want to bring a mixed eager and graph mode uh, execution model to PyTorch, to general PyTorch audiences. And that allows us to provide a sort of bridge uh, from PyTorch eager execution to domain-specific compilers without users having to do a lot of work to explicitly invoke these tools. And you know, this is all kind of rolled up under the idea of a lazy tensor. And we have a lot more exciting work going on in this area, so stay tuned for more details. And so overall, the way that we view the future of compilers in PyTorch is we want to emphasize using Python as a basic substrate, a lingua franca, with a modular compilation optimization stack that lets you use the best tool for the job. And at the same time, we'd like to really enable and push on eager, uh, lazy execution within PyTorch uh, to provide a bridge between more static domain-specific compilers and Pythonic eager mode developer experience. All right, thank you.